I can't believe there's so much gone on in a year. Mm. When you're looking back, it's as if it's several years. Mm. And, and as we move into 2023, it's not just that optimism from the UK. We're reading, you know, every... I say there's a hierarchy in true potential is that clients always first, advisors are close second, and we've come in third. Mm. We have. Mm. The lowest ranking return, funny enough, with it rising inflation, is cash. So we're still saying that over the medium to long term basis, an asset backed investment is right. Mm-hmm. Cash. So when we were talking, you know, getting into 2022, was what an opportunity it was to get into the markets when the mm-hmm. when the, the values were lower, uh, and presumably that's what you know. Yeah, I mean, I, you I, would do. I you I, use your ISA allowances, get as much money into pensions as you possibly can, mm-hmm. and take advantage of those tax mm-hmm. those tax advantaged products mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. How great is Britain, David? Well, there's a, there's a, a question a, for you. How great is Britain? It's, it's Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another True Potential Do More With Your Money podcast. It's episode 150 this week, and my guests are some of the people who appeared on episode one right back three years ago. They are the senior partners, the founding partners of this company of True Potential, who took the firm from nothing more than an idea all those years ago to now proudly managing £24 billion of our clients' investments. So we're going to talk today partly about how they did that, but also their reflections on 2022. And more importantly, we'll get some of the the insight and their experience to look ahead into the new year. So let's meet them. We've got Mark Henderson on the podcast this week. Also, Daniel Harrison, Chief Executive. Earl Glasgow's here. Uh, We've had a Lord on the podcast before, Lord of the Realm, but never a Knight of the Realm. We're going to change that today. We've got Sir David Harrison with us. Hello, uh, gentlemen. Are you all well? Yes. Very well. Great. Thank, Thank you. It's been good to see you and a happy new year to you all as happy well. Happy new year. Yeah. Yeah. Are you staying for the duration, David? You haven't taken your coat off. I mean, are you, well, are you, I, have I you just, got to be somewhere? or? No, I've just got no sleeves. In my <laughs> <laughs> I've only got a T-shirt on underneath. Yeah. So I thought that would look slovenly for... Well, it, it would do. It wouldn't look uh, at all befitting. I thought maybe you were desperate to get away and uh, carry on reading Prince Harry's autobiography. I know you're desperate to get stuck into that. I am. It's. Uh, yeah. I think he is a spare part. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll talk about some of that over the next, uh, <laughs> oh, the next the 45 order. minutes or so. Did you see what I did there? <laughs> That's it. Um, a lot to talk about. I mean, we're going to touch on, on, on 2022, and, and I really wanted to look more forward if we can, but we, we, we can't do a podcast this early in the year and not at least talk about some of the issues that dominated last year, because they do feed in. Um, and, and Mark, I wanted to come to you first, because we talk on this podcast about... You know, investing, investments, that's fundamentally what we do. And we do it on morning markets every day as well. And the markets was a huge theme last year. And I just wanted to take you back maybe to the start of 2022, 12 months ago. Even with your experience, you wouldn't have anticipated the year being turning out like it did. But I wanted to just maybe get a feel for how you, how we as a company and your team managed some of those obstacles, found the opportunities within them and took advantage of some of the things that came along. What are your reflections? I think, Peter, for me, the, the... The very heart of the storm was when we were running seminars, funny enough, for our advisors in, mm. in October. And we were, we were in uh, Northern Ireland in Earl's home backyard there. And it was at the time where we, we, we actually had a script that we worked throughout the seminar too. Daniel did week one, I did week two. And we, we changed the script. Usually, you know, each day you read the papers, you put something, something out there and you, it's topical because that's, that's key. You've got to stay on top of what's happening. But with the seminar, when we were in Ireland that day, we had a script in the morning. It was changing by the hour mm-hmm. as there was rumours about what was going to happen to the, the Chancellor at the time. By the time we'd sat up, I, I introduced it and two hours later I had to change what I said because, you know, say anticipate the Chancellor leaving. By the time the seminar had ended, two hours later he'd gone. And I think that 2022 is a year of big change. There's volatility in the markets. We had inflation, we've had interest rate rises, we've had central banks uh, trying to control inflation through the, the one real measure they have, which is interest rates, and that had a big effect on asset markets. And it was a strange year, and it wasn't a good year, we'll have to say, it wasn't a good year for investment. Um, we've got to take that, we've got to take it on the chin and we've got to move forward and move with optimism based on, on what we're seeing at the moment in fact. So what did we learn from 2022? It's the thing that we've said to clients in Never every trust podcast. The don't trust the Russians. <laughs> uh, and don't read Prince Harry's book. Um, but also, when you are invested, please, please don't react badly to what happens in the day-to-day volatility mm. because asset markets will recover. As we're recording this, 
FTSE is just about at its all-time high. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we're not picking up through the day-to-day press. Mm -hmm. Everything's bad about the UK if you read about it. It's absolutely not. There's plenty of things and there's plenty of opportunities Mm -hmm. that we have to take as an asset management firm, Mm -hmm. but there's plenty of things to be proud of as well. Yeah. And as we move into 2023, it's not just that optimism from the UK. We're reading, you know, every investment bank, every asset management Mm. across the world has their own predictions. Mm. And the sense of optimism after a bad 2022 Mm -hmm. is there to be read. Mm. You know, one of the the world's leading investment banks has said they've never felt so confident about the bond market in a decade. Mm. And we've got to take that on board. And th- we'll, we will see this coming through, Peter, in 2023. It's really interesting what you said there about the, um, the seminars and things changing. I mean, yeah. th- we've got true insight in the, in the foreground there. And, and that was issue number 28, I think, edition yeah. 28 that we've produced. I remember working with you on it. And we had to delay publishing it because events were just changing quicker than you could ever keep up with. And, That's right. You know, it was, uh, I'm not going to use the word unprecedented, but it was certainly a, a different... Uh, you type just, of uh, you just did only to say yeah. I wasn't going to use it, which right. made no sense. But anyway, yeah, Peter, um, we, we had other things with, with the delivery, if you remember, because there was the, the you know there was the threat of a postal strike, which yeah. was suspended and then came into place. So we we issued for the first time True yeah. Insight in a digital format to yes. clients, mm, yes. wrote to them and said you can download it now. But the yeah. version that's delivered when it's delivered through <laughs> yeah. your letterbox yeah. might be actually different. Might from look this. a little bit different from the yeah. first one you got. Yeah. Um, I'll come to you in a second, uh, Earl. Just uh, wanted to touch on you, particularly you look after uh, recruitment and advisors yeah. coming to work, work with us and it's worth saying that about 20% of the entire financial advisor workforce in the UK works with us and many whom will be watching this podcast and, and, and read our <laughs> content and watch it as well. You, we saw last year that despite what Mark's talked about and, and things like this, we had a great year for advisors. Yeah. Wanting to, why, why did advisors want to join True Potential? Why did they look at everything and think that's the firm for me? I think... You know, we get them up here every Wednesday, Peter. So one of the key things we do is bring people up and walk them around the building yeah. so they can understand everything about us. Mm-hmm. And then I think we've always stood by this, you know, you have always had this thing about the client's always first. Mm. I have this hierarchy, and it's the first thing I tell them when I open the day up and I say there's a hierarchy and true potential is the client's always first, advisors are close second, and we'll come in third. Mm. If we can look after the client, and look after the advisor, we'll be okay. Mm. But the client's always first. And I think that resonates with them because when, when they're trying to get attracted by other organisations, I don't think that comes out strongly. Mm. And it comes out strongly here in the apps we give the clients, the way we look after them. And the other unique thing that we do is when people join us, we'll look after that client forever. Mm. So if they take ill, die, yeah. or want to retire, we can do it. So we'll put the client first. Mm. And I think that reassures the advisor and settles them down. Mm. And then we focus on them. And I know what we do for advisors, you know, is way above what happens in the industry, whether it be trying to, you know, differentiation is about, you know, what can we do for them? We can save them time, mm. we can save them money, or make them money yeah. in the right business model. And I, I said, why would an advisor look at us and think that's the right place for me? Actually, that's wrong. What they were thinking is, this is the right place for my clients. clients yeah. for Always. The long term. Mm. I, I've learned a long time ago, mm. you know, no matter, it doesn't matter, and you'd never try and <laughs> bribe anybody, or, and, mm. but the thing is, right, if in their head they think this is the right place for the client, mm. then they'll listen to me about what I can do for them. Yeah. So you get the client message out first, and, you know, we've got testimony, we'll look after many, many thousands of clients mm. for advisors who've retired, um, but once we get that message, then I know the package for the advisor is mm. great, mm-hmm. and that, that does it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Daniel, to bring you in as, as, as the chief executive, as the leader of this this business, you go into a year like 2022, you don't know what's going to happen, but Mark's talked about some of the issues, Earl's talked about how he responded, yeah. and your job is to make sure that the business do, doesn't stop, it doesn't stand, it cannot stand still, no. it has to grow, and what? how do you, how do you, if you like, always keeping, as Earl said, always keeping clients front and centre of your mind, how do you power through and drive the business forward in a year like 2022? I think you have to absolutely do what Earl said start with the client mm. and put yourself in the shoes of what a client would expect. Yeah. Um, what, 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 what does a client want to know from their, their partner, their, their, their firm who are looking after their investments and their, their future? Um, it's giving them facts. Mm. It's communicating those facts in a straightforward fashion. It's communicating those in a non-biased fashion. Mm-hmm. 
as well, which you'll probably pick up a bit of a theme today about media versus some of the reality mm -hmm. as well. And it's reassuring the client that with a firm like True Potential who are running their money, looking after their money, working with their financial advisor or indeed looking after them if their advisor is exited with their best interests at heart. And Mark, you know, Mark said we, we, we can't hide from the fact that last year in terms of investment performance, mm -hmm. it certainly isn't what we wanted. Everybody in this room, by the way, are uh, investors in True Potential. Just about everybody in this building is yeah. at, at True Potential. So believe you me, ladies and gentlemen, when you're listening at home, we feel the pain as, as, as well. But I think the diversification flashes through. And I think at times, because I do read the odd comment on, on, on YouTube and, and what have you, so this isn't a, a counter to those there, but I think at times it can be misunderstanding as well about diversification mm -hmm. uh, from, from there. I'm looking over Mark Scholler here. Not one asset class last year performed, which is really, really unusual mm -hmm. from, from there. Uh, the reason why some of our more defensive side of things jumped down mark was because of bond markets and, and, and what have you. That is really untypical from there. And, and one of the ways in which we wanted to communicate to clients last year was to say, stick at it, hold tight as well, because if you cash out now, if you take it out, mm -hmm. you will crystallize that loss. Yeah. And a big proud achievement of me, Mark, David Earl, and, and, and the rest of the team was the fact that our clients did listen mm -hmm. to that communication, mm -hmm. to the way they did, and they, they stuck where they were. And now you talk about Mark, when, when, when Mark was saying, the far beginning we've had to January mm -hmm. as well. If you stayed put last year, you're beginning to enjoy mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, you, you rewind back, Mark's yeah. the expert of this, as is Jeff, as is the rest of the investment management team. We do have years like last year, mm -hmm. every so often. Mm -hmm. But the winners are those who stayed put yeah. and then enjoyed the upturn, enjoyed the optimism, which which we're hearing it, from there. What I thought I'd do, Dan, just be, in preparation for this, and I, I know you, you can see what I've written yeah. down, but I looked at the performance of the portfolios since the first podcast that we did, just be, after we, we came back from Shanghai yes. and before COVID. <laughs> and he brought COVID back. Yeah, before, the, yes. before we were super spreaders. And <laughs> if you think about everything that, that's, that's happened in the world, that, mm. you know, COVID, we had the, the November boost, October, November, when vaccine news came through. Yeah. And then the bad time of this year with the interest rates and and uh, and inflation, and the the we've made money. The mm -hmm. the, the bonds portfolios up nearly three and a half percent during that. Just since, mm -hmm. you know, the first podcast episode yeah. number one, the the aggressive portfolio, and it, mm -hmm. it 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 illustrates Dan's point about about the diversification side, which has less bonds in it, mm -hmm. is up eleven percent, eleven and a half percent since podcast number one, and that's risen through COVID, it's risen through everything that we've seen in, in 2022. Yeah. So that's, mm. that's why we're saying stay in your seat if you can do. Yeah. Stay I, in your I seat. wanted to bring um, Sir David in in a minute just on some of these issues because I, I really want to get your perspective on them, David. But before we do, I mean, there's, D Daniel, there's a, there's a plethora of podcasts out there that, you know, how to be a high performance business leader, all this kind of stuff. But while we've got you in the room, I really wanted to ask, what, what do you do uh, going in when you have a business plan? Presumably you did at the start of last year, you had a business plan that's, you know, built around business performance, not for you, not for us, but for the clients. Mm -hmm. Then you have events that come along and change. Do you rip the business plan up and start again? Do you have to adapt it? Do you just, do you just plow on with it regardless? What is the, how do you no, approach I, that kind I, of thing? I think you, you, you have to assume strategies based on very fixed views, which, which we draw upon fantastic experience from mm. the senior partners, from Sir David and from, mm. from, from others in, within there. And our strategy for our true potential be 16 mm -hmm. in March this year, for yep. instance. And the strategy and the vision has always been realized. But the way in which you deploy that can change and can adapt. Um, you shouldn't change it fundamentally because the last thing you want is an organization who makes these huge shifts year upon year upon year because you don't have the identity, you can't build the momentum from there. But by, again, going back to the client, by listening to the client mm -hmm. and actually speaking to them and find out what they're thinking about investment, speaking to our other clients, the financial advisors who, who, who we all deals with, mm -hmm. and then indeed dealing with our staff from there as well. What that lets you do is make tactical adjustments throughout the year, but without losing sight of what the long-term vision long -term. is. Very similar to yeah. investing. And Absolutely. we've talked about this again a lot last year, which is don't forget the reason why you have a pension or mm. is to retire in 20 years time or 30 years time. 
and have an income of X, Y, Z. It's very much the same when we formulate strategy. So one of the things in which we're trying to, to lead and, and speak is exactly, it exactly mirrors what we said about clients, which is be straightforward, mm. communicate, share what you're doing and why mm -hmm. with your advisors, with your staff from there. And then you have to stick to it. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. just have to, you know, I, I, I do often hear about you know, entrepreneurs does this and you know, yeah. you, you wake up at 4 a.m. and you go yeah. in the sea and then you meditate and all that. Yeah. It's, it's not that, it's just- You don't do that. I don't do that. I've done I, that for, I, done that for years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What we do is we wake up, we go to work mm -hmm. every day, we look after our clients every mm -hmm. day, we listen mm -hmm. and we work on their behalf. Yeah. And you stick to some of those principles um, it's hard to go well, wrong. Well, you practice what there. you preach because we've talked at this firm since day one about having a long-term goal. Yeah. And, stay, and that a long-term goal, that doesn't change. The, what happens in between may do a little bit, but it wouldn't change. David, you've talked over the years, I've heard you speak loads of times in various audiences about, you know, a, a five-year business plan. And, and actually part of the, the trick there is that there are events that come along that you couldn't possibly predict. Nobody, in the 150 podcasts you mentioned, mm -hmm. Mark, nobody would have predicted, you know, a war, or nobody planned for a war uh, in Europe with Russia and Ukraine, yeah. perhaps with the exception. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always somebody with a plan. <laughs> but a uh, pandemic wouldn't have been it. Well, did anyone plan for the pandemic? Maybe that's a different podcast. Well, no, I, I, there is. It, the mistake people make, Peter, is, is to take where you are now and then forecast it ahead five years, ten years. We saw some of that during. I know it's, it's, it's tricky when you're a government scientific officer or a government health guy and you know you've got so many fluffy blonde hair standing in front of you and you're trying to predict things and of course all those predictions were wrong mm -hmm. now it's not being critical they were wrong because you're looking too far ahead and you're trying to predict when you don't have enough facts to make a prediction about as mark said earlier look where the footy is now that's not been predicted mm -hmm. we had we have ongoing discussions, but I can tell you about two months ago we had a fallout with some quite, you know, the, the big hitters of the, the city world. It was split an opinion. And what I was, uh, and, and the same with the accountancy firm, you know, what I said was, your job is to tell me what's happened, mm -hmm. right? I'm not interested in you telling me what's going to, you are an accountant. Mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you have no idea what's going to happen next year. And I said, neither have I. But what I do know is I'll be quicker than you to, to act to it. Mm. You, you've, got, you've got an overall goal to head towards. And it's funny, once, you, once again, you talk about clients and things like this. Not everybody in this industry ever put the client first. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, you know, you come from a life and pensions background. They were putting their jobs first. There are certain organisations to which we pay nearly 50% of the government's the, my GDP going into a certain organisation, they don't always put the clients first. They often put their jobs and their positions and everything else and their holidays mm -hmm. first before they put it before the people who are paying the taxes to be looked after. Not just in my opinion, that's, once again, I think that's a fact. Um, so what, when we say we put the clients first, there are practical steps such as the first thing we designed was what the client sees. Not what the advisor sees, not what head office sees. You work from outside in, right, which is unique. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, and, and when you look at banks and other places where, where you've got dated systems, you know, they don't talk to each other, they have these massive problems, things, our approach has always been very different. Mm -hmm. right? A, we'll write off a system. It's a hit to the P&L account. Fine, we can sustain that, but we don't do it that way. We build a new system each time. It's a new system. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for people to get their heads around, but you just build a new system each time. You don't change the, you don't change the data. Mm -hmm. Rather than keep tinkering with that system, so when you open that door, a window opens instead, and when you close the window, the door stays open. You know, that's what happens with all the systems, mm -hmm. patched together and things like this. Well, I learned that in the previous company we had before this company, and I learned some of that from a previous, previous company where I had huge databases, yeah. Peter. So I think, you know, putting clients first is easy to say because who doesn't say that? Mm. You, know, uh, you know, we hate our clients. Mm. You know, see how well you do there. 
it's you don't need to hate anybody. You put the clients first mm. because quite simply, mm. it's their money, mm. right? If you're an entrepreneur, you head for where the money is. The money is with the clients, yeah. right? The other thing about getting good growth, 7%, 7.1% a year, every 10 years, your money doubles. Your pension doubles, pension put doubles every 10 years. If you can deliver to people 7.1%, which we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and th that requires very, very careful management mm -hmm. of the, the worldwide mm -hmm. managers that we've got. Mm -hmm. Once again, a unique a aspect. People just don't, yeah. it's not easy to get Goldman Sachs to work for you. Mm -hmm. Just trust me on that. It's not easy to get a giant such as SEI mm -hmm. and we can deliver the funds to our clients cheaper than they sell them direct to their clients mm -hmm. because of our clout. Mm -hmm. Right. All of those, you know, as I think I care about 10 or 11, yeah. world-class managers who work for us, mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not a fund of funds. We give them money and they're in that money, but we, we once again, as Mark was saying, we don't, that's not it. Mm -hmm. We want to know what's going on mm -hmm. every day. So, you, you know, you can't just like, invest and go away. You need to know what's going on, which is where the technology and everything in Danny's department comes in. And we'll make it dead easy for, for, for Earl because he's now, it's, it's dead easy. Why Is it dead easy, Earl? Why wouldn't you work <laughs> with I think us? the answer has to be yes. Yeah. <laughs> In present company. Yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah. I, 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 we have some fabulous advisors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean because we're like the client. We don't like, the, obviously I've spent my whole life working with advisors. It's, it's just that the, the, if your focus starts with that, you work up through because Earl said it, advisors join us because they know mm. they've got, we've all got a finite uh, amount of time on earth. Uh, after a while, you want your clients to be looked after. Mm. Um, and we look after their clients. So when they want to retire properly, rather than part-time or whatever, when they, when they go, we will look after their clients. And of course, the client has the beauty of getting to know us first over a period of time mm -hmm. and understanding us, and that's why we talk direct to them. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, you know, but we're, we're not, I haven't got a different message to the advisors because yeah. I think we're, we're, we're in line with that, we're in step with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, well, I really want to talk, as I said at the start, about the new year and, and stop looking in the rear view mirror and look, look ahead if we can. Mm -hmm. But just before, while we've got you here, um, and I know you're a great, great student of history, David, you're very incredibly well read. Mm -hmm. in, in the last 12 months, we, you know, we've had this. We, well, the pandemic was before that, but we've had the after effects, let's say, of the pandemic. We've had this war. You know, the big event in the UK last year was the death of Her Majesty the Queen, but there's an awful lot we can learn from her as well. And, yeah. and in many ways, that was a celebration of her life. I mean, how do you look back on 2022? Was it, I'm not going to use that word again, don't worry, but I mean, <laughs> was it a year like none other? Or, or, or did, these, did these things just happen and they come along more often and you realise when you look back? Well, uh, since I've been alive, there's no Queen died, so that, that's, that's, a, that's a new event. Um, I think uh, it, it's, it was an unusual year for many, many things. Mm. It, despite everything, you know, you read, you, there, there won't be a thing in the news tonight that says, look where the footy is. Mm. It's there. there won't be a thing in the news tonight that says, gas is cheaper now than it was December, mm -hmm. year before last. So it's cheaper now. What you'll have in the, is go, oh, it's really, really hard. Yeah. Last night there was like a whole load of people in different places, living on the street. Um, then, you know, it's on the back of uh, a book from somebody who needs to grow up. Um, he's sort of being a big baby. Uh, or he needs to wear the trousers in his house. You know, just putting it out there rather than his wife wearing the trousers for him. He was bad enough before all that started, but he's really a big baby now. Divides opinion, you know, so what? <coughs> I mean, it divides opinion, David. I think everyone just wants him to shut up. He just wants yeah. to sh shut his mouth. Yeah, really, um, and, and because it, it, it's it's demotivating. Mm -hmm. But once again, if you have a look at the, the the figures, people are watching the other side, are watching something, some quiz on the other side had a bigger readership than than one one of his interviews. You know, you think it's so. To answer your question, sorry, Peter. I can't believe there's so much gone on in a year. Mm -hmm. When you're looking back, it's as if it's several years mm -hmm. and you kind of get mixed up with, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. I think the tragedy this year, the 
tragedy, a couple of tragedies. One is what the Russians are doing to Ukraine, and it's good to see the Ukraine you fighting back and giving them a good hide and hard lines and some of those Russian sh- soldiers, you know, because they they don't want to fight either. Yeah. You know? um, Queen dying, I think, you know, there's an inevitability about that. I think King Charles will do a great job, um, uh, and his missus will do. She's been doing a good job for for a while. It, it would be foolish to think, and I don't want to be too controversial, but when you listen to some of the news and certainly some news channels, yeah. there is definitely there's definitely a bias going on. There's yeah. no doubt about it. The 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 so last night they hear once again about Boris Johnson. Can I just five minutes on that? Right, some of us wrote to him to say what you should need to do at the start of all this thing. You, 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 you're not the same as everybody else. You know, you're not you're the prime minister. The government is not the same as this business. It's running the country. The country's a big business. You can't have somebody running the country from the house, working from home. I know you've got some civil servants that think they can. Mm. And I have no doubt, it, all I would say is, how would you know anyway? But the difference they make, they might as well stay at home. So what, what Boris did to himself was inflicted. He should, instead of being Superman, he should have just said, look, <coughs> we're going to have to do some stuff here. Mm-hmm. I think we had one lockdown too many, and I think Rishi gave away too much money, mm-hmm. frankly, to the wrong, to the wrong people. Mm-hmm. The be- the, 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 once again, the downsides of that, not being controversial, we can actually see uh, 5.2 million people who aren't working. Yeah, still are at work. It's, yeah. a, it's still not at work. Some of them weren't at work beforehand. Some of them will never work, mm. and some of them haven't worked for years. Mm. I think you can carry them along in a, in a society, a civilised society. I'm, I'm not bothered about mm. that. Um, what I'm bothered about is people portraying mm. to me mm. as if that's Britain. Mm. That's not Britain. Yeah. None of my friends yeah. or people I know, and I've got a wide mm. range, mm of contacts are even remotely like that. Yeah. They work damn hard and they wouldn't accept charity unless they're desperate mm-hmm. people. So, you know, you can call what you like, but, you know. You're right in what you said about, you know, we've talked about it on this podcast before, and I think you mentioned it before, about the, the media, you know, nothing sounds like a bad news story, I suppose, and, and you get that every night. And um, But, I mean, looking ahead to the year, the message they all portray would be we're all going to hand a hand card. But I mean, you said at the very start, Mark, that was a really good point. There is, if you listen to the right people, there is optimism out there. Are you optimistic going into 2023? I mean, do you think this year will be, you know, will we see a big bounce this year? How are you approaching the new year? I think last year, Peter, I think well, good, good leadership is always when the chips are down, mm. you don't go invisible. You're out front with, with, your, your, with your team. And I know even through COVID and right into last year and going into this year, you know, we've tried to grow, you know, have enough people working with me because there's a market there mm-hmm. for advisors who have to make sure their clients are looked after because average age yeah. is, is 58. So I think for me, you know, as, as advisors get more mature and get older, whatever mm-hmm. what word you want to use there to be, be nice to them, um, you know, the date of birth's moving on. They have to think about, you know, what am I going to do? I need the I need my clients looked after, mm-hmm. and you know, for me, then the market grows, and it's having enough people around me to speak to them about how we can look after the client, you know, and how we can enable them to either, you know, phase down their business, reduce it, or you know, have a have a good exit with their clients looked after. Yeah. So I'm optimistic that there's a, a bigger market, mm-hmm. just by dates of birth. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you've got some new um, fund manager partners that we, we started to work with last year and a new yeah. year, new relationships as well. I mean, do you see that evolving as the as uh, yeah, we go Peter, forward? Yeah, the, the new managers that we've, we've, we've brought in have, have bedded in very nicely into the portfolios and we will increase the allocation to those uh, managers mm-hmm. as, as the year goes by. But I think the optimism, Peter, from the investment side has to be there. We've got to look for opportunity, otherwise it will just stagnate. Mm-hmm. And the, the beauty of the portfolios is it brings active management where we just don't follow a crowd. We can select opportunities where we see them. And that's the challenge that we've got going forward. 
And, you know, you, you hear things coming out of the financial industry about the opportunity and assets have repriced. Basically, what they're saying is after last year, you can buy things cheaper than the, you could the year before. Um, we've got to look at this and see where those opportunities um, exist and where to invest client money. Now, there's a wide range of opportunity. And again, it comes back to what Dan was saying about diversity in there and diversification of the portfolios. So if you take what would be classed as a high risk area of investment, as in it is volatile and you'd need to sit in it for a long time, the highest ranking um, asset would be Chinese equities. Again, this is what I'm picking up reading from the various re, uh, research reports we come in that are coming in, and we would we would go along with that. But you wouldn't say to somebody, right, we're going to put 100% of your equity content into China because we think it might do two or three percent better than Europe. We will spread the risk around. Mm. We'll spread the investment around, depending on where the client tells us from day one that they want to be mm -hmm. in which of the five profiles we have. Mm -hmm. The lowest ranking return, funny enough, with it rising inflation, is cash. So we're still saying that over the medium to long term basis, an asset backed investment is right. Mm -hmm. Cash, yes, interest rates have gone up. The interest rates for borrowers have gone up. They're not going up as quickly for, for people who've got money on deposit. Mm -hmm. So don't think that cash is a long term home for money at all. Mm -hmm. we, will, we will use cash when we need to, but it's only a temporary home mm -hmm. until we, we invest that money yeah. into, into the markets. Yeah. And advanced diversification is something we talk an awful lot about here once again proved to be the right strategy yeah. and, and no doubt will be will be again this year absolutely there's no change it's it's yeah. like daniel was saying before you said strategy our strategy for an investment was advanced diversification mm -hmm. and on a day-to-day -day basis our managers apply that tactically mm -hmm. but there is a long-term goal I, I think peter you know because it, it, it's an easy phrase but there's a lot of work went into it um based on you know not just me colin Mark, there's a there. Are, we know just about everybody there is to know mm -hmm. in the investment industry from many many years ago. But there's some there's some long there's 300 years of data if you want about the kind of return you should expect from an asset backed investment, such as rents. So they're often called people who get who invest their money in something they're called renters. You know, if you were Adam Smith kind of thing you know, the return on rent, which is the same as the return that you should expect to draw down or something. We base our models on 5%. Mm -hmm. So, and that's easy because it's just 20 times something or divide by 20 or multiply by 5%. So it's easy for people to understand what we mean by that. Um, and, and therefore the target that we're trying to get somebody's pension to is that, and if they take 5% of that, they'll have a good life and there's a good chance at the end of the day, they still have the same capital. With inflation coming up, because the thing that Mark just missed there was, yeah, cash against what? Whatever inflation figure the, the press want to tell you, you know, and there's different ways to come up with that basket of where that basket comes from of, and a different type of inflation mm -hmm. yeah. as well. The main thing there is to say, if you're in cash, mm -hmm because you're waiting to invest, fine. Okay, if you're in cash because you're gonna live on that, it's very clear, you're not gonna be able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is it? And the, the, the lesson for me about this year is, that's it. Anybody who is just sitting there and going to the piggy bank and taking some money out, the, 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 it's hit them. Because mm -hmm. the that piggy bank doesn't increase in size. Yeah. Asset backed investments are the best hedge you can get against inflation because if you like the cause inflation because mm -hmm. you're investing in a real thing yeah. be it a factory be it a car factory selling cars if the price of that car goes up their profits go up the share price goes up etc etc and that's what we're investing in mm -hmm. cash is there just to invest for me mm -hmm. i mean mark knows my views you're either in cash or in for me equities somewhere in between like bonds it's fine, you know, depending what your risk appetite is, but the only way to really grow over the long term, and I'm going back not just yeah. one year yeah. uh, or 20 yeah. years, uh, you know, faced with that, if you were to give people, which is a big bugbear of mine, give people the facts, mm. Daniel said it earlier, if you just give them the facts, mm. you don't need any projections, look backwards, mm. 
It doesn't mean, you know, that's going to repeat itself, but yeah. that's what people have seen 20 years ago about mm -hmm. previous 20 years. It does yeah. repeat itself because yeah. there are very real reasons why these things work in the way they do. One thing I missed actually when we were talking, you know, getting into 2022 was what an opportunity it was to get into the markets when the, mm. w when the, the values were lower. Uh, and presumably that's what, you know, yeah, I mean, I, you would do. I, you wish I, do. I wish you had. No, I, I mean, the, the, if, I'd had, if I'd had a few. The other point to make clear to people here is another one of our principles is a thing called skin in the game. Mm. Right, so every partner, every person in this building is invested mm. in true potential, mm. in true potential funds. I'm not, I'm not personally just invested in there. I have a guide with other, with other fund managers and I can tell you his has outperformed everybody in those categories that I'm invested in. Mm -hmm. Fine, I'm not so much bothered about that. We're there and we're achieving over the long term. You know, I want 10%, so I'll have to be more aggressive. By the way, 10% per annum, your money doubles every 7.1 years versus the other way around, 71% doubles every 10 years. So it's fairly easy for my simple brain to understand those, those few figures. But if you set up a business on that, you don't, you can't go to sleep at night. Mm. You can't sleep. Yeah. You, do, you don't need to worry. All of us, you know, who knows what could happen. Mm. You know, there, you, could there you go, Mark. It's a nice easy challenge for you this year. Just get 10%. It's, it's not <laughs> any different from any previous year. I can assure you of that. The other thing, you know, talking about tactical things that clients can do, and, mm. and David hit on it earlier on when he saying Rishi gave too much money away. Mm. The tax burden on the individual is not going to go yeah. down. Use your ISA allowances, get as much money into the pensions as you possibly can mm -hmm. and take advantage of those tax, mm -hmm. those tax advantaged products mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I mean, pensions the best thing in the world, probably in the known world. Yeah. It's very, very few countries have got the sort of tax advantages that some of our products have got, yeah. but, uh, and, and they're hard to yeah. beat. Uh, and with, you know, people don't get taught that stuff at school, do they? You don't get taught about a pension is a great vehicle. Start early, invest what you can. If you get a bit of extra money, get it in your pension. We don't, as you say, it's, it's a wonderful vehicle that, that's, you know, yeah. it can be life changing if you get, get it right and if you get, I, get I, off on a good start. We, we try and make it as easy as possible. Impulse save is mm -hmm. something which is designed for people to go, right, I'll just put a pound in. Mm -hmm. And they can put a pound in to start an account. And people, people say to me, that that, that, that must be. That must cost you money. Well, it doesn't because it's a pound on top of billions of pounds. So yeah. it's, it's instantly profitable to mm -hmm. us, Peter, because of the, yeah. the technology. But, you know, I'm not saying, you know, it would be a great advert. Rather than have a cup of coffee, I'll put some money into my pension. You know, um, <laughs> and, and, well, it is, isn't it? You know, like, we're, we're, we're pushing against a closed door. Mm. You, you, but people in the end are just like us. People in, here's another thing. They don't want bad news. Mm -hmm. If you want proof, of, I've just been looking at a graph there of when people log in, log in, when they come in to have a look at their values and things like this, the question would be, do they look at it more when they're worried because it's going down? Mm -hmm. Or do they look at it more when they watch the news or whatever in the footy or whatever's going up? It's the latter. Mm -hmm. People want good news. They're interested. They're more interested when things are going well. When it's, they don't want to be reminded when it's gone by, oh no. They, they want to feel good about what they're doing. So it's the same putting money in every now and then. And, and a big fight for us is to try and ensure that that money is looked after, that we can look after people in a modern way. Watch the news tonight, it'll be all about strikes and everything else. And, you know, as I say, Britain's in a mess. How great is Britain, David? Well, there's a, there's a, a question for you. How great is Britain? It's the fifth, look, we're a tiny island, right? We're a tiny island. We take up next to nothing of the world's surface. We contribute less than 1% of global warming gases, factually, right? I know, you know, we're surrounded by the sea, so be careful about global warming, and next thing will be covered in water. We won't be. We won't be. We'll not run out of energy because somebody, this is the thing about progress, somebody will invent a system which is better than the systems we've got right now, which will create electricity for us, heat us up, do of course it will happen. That, that's been, that's what humans do, we're the best animal in the world. We're not like a dog, a dog's nice, but they're not as clever as clever individuals. And you don't need to be that clever, the average person is very, very clever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people are, are, are 
doom and gloom and stuff. They're getting paid to do it. Mm. They're getting paid to do it. They're getting paid to paint this picture of stuff. And, and I know people listen to it, but it, the good news is it doesn't really go in. Yeah. After a while, it gets fed up. Britain, Great Britain, fifth largest country in the world in terms of money, mm -hmm. buying power, probably the second largest in terms of soft power. You know, wherever I go, they like you because you're British. Mm -hmm. Not everywhere you go. You've got to be very careful. <laughs> There's been places where, because you're British, they don't like you. Mm -hmm. But in the main, they do like you. Yeah. Because we are fair. We've got common law. We have got rules, a rules-based society. You know, and you know, as long as we stick to that, as long mm -hmm. as we get policemen to lock people up rather than be on with them. You don't want them picking somebody and patting on the head who's just threw a brick at somebody. Mm -hmm. You want them locked up. Yeah. Right? That's a policeman's job. They're not community care, mm -hmm. the, 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 the police. Yeah. Same with firefighters or whatever, you know, same with everything else. They're very valuable members of society, but yeah. we have to remember society's bigger than that. There are other people in society, not just you lot, mm -hmm. who have also gone through. We went through COVID, right, with a penny, trying to keep going. We opened up every day. We looked after people's money every day because imagine we just went home and left people's pensions lying around. We couldn't mm -hmm. do that. We did all that. I don't want a medal, mm -hmm. right? We just got paid. We just ran, not just us. The bulk of business people, the bulk of businesses went like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Right, and that, that, you know, I think it's a great place. Yeah. We need to wrap up in a minute because David wants to get off and watch uh, the Netflix series of Prince Harry and Meghan, so we don't want to keep... I'm watching Bernie Madoff at the moment, I think he's... Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask Daniel, one of the other big things we did very well in 2022, and I know we'll do more of this year, was how we support more individuals in the community as well, and, yeah. and we had a, I think, a 25% increase in the amount of, of activity that we did and the, and the funds that you and others donated. Uh, two good causes. Yeah. Um, no doubt we'll do more of that in 2023. Yeah, I think um, when, when we, we finished Top Never Ring Up, I think we, we, we reached £500,000 mm -hmm. last year between True Potential and the Harrison Foundation, who, when David set True Potential back up, he, he, we, we had the family charity, but um, they made the Harrison Foundation uh, a partner mm -hmm. in True Potential as well, which what it means is Every time True Potential does well, it's helping the Harrison Foundation as a charity, which in turn shares that money out there. So we often see the two working hand in hand, which is why we do so. And we support a, a wide range of causes, everything from causes which mean something to our staff. You know, it could be, mm -hmm. a, it, it could be a, a personal or a, a family side of things, or indeed some of our clients and our wealth <coughs> managers. But what we're also looking to do is, as well as working on those slightly smaller levels, we're trying to... We're trying to create an impact, a long-standing impact. We're trying to... Why Why? The, why, why, why is that important to you in the business? It's important. I, I think it's important just as, a, as an individual um, because what we're trying to do is give opportunities, give ownership, give pride to people where they can actually go and get on. And so David's talking about migrants and, and what have you. You know, it, it's, it's given individuals like that who may not have the opportunities. It, we've got people who aren't migrants who live here as well who don't maybe necessarily have the opportunity to go to school or to learn or to work. And if you can get those people on the right track, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about trains soon, Peter, <laughs> when we're talking about tracks <laughs> no. in a moment, uh, via good education, via good confidence, mm -hmm. getting them into work from there, what it does is it supports something which David and True Potential have been so strong about since day dot, which is social mobility, mm -hmm. which is allowing everybody to rise yeah. from there and that comes from being able to work it mm -hmm. comes from being educated it comes from having opportunities mm -hmm. there so when we look ahead to 2023 i know peter you and i and david and, and the rest of the the harrison foundation team we've, we've been looking at how, how can we continue to spread that across yeah. last year was obviously the first foreign the international mm -hmm. side of things as well with the the school which david opened in in in, in antigua and barbuda uh, from there and we should continue to do more of that um, because the more bright people you've got the more people who want to work the more people who want to better themselves it just helps everybody yeah absolutely um, 
And there are now six Harrison centres. There was there was you know one this time last year, I think, and we've gone to six in twenty twenty two. One of them is a train, by the way, or it could be, which is the tr- the track joke for tr- oh, the in joke, just in case anybody was wondering <laughs> what that is. But we'll have more about that another time. Um, it's a train centre. Uh, yeah, I, well, I see. There you go. I think that's a, this is the moment to end the podcast. Then <laughs> um, we've descended into that. Um, I should have said this is the point to end the. The points. points yeah, I know, that a signal? Points. Well, uh, yes. that was the, that, it definitely is the signal to leave. We're trying, um, to, we're trying to keep you on track. So. That's right, yeah. That's one of mine, though. You nicked that from earlier. Yeah. Um, often we end the podcast by saying what you're doing after the after the show or what you're doing this mm. weekend. I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to ask, what is one thing that you're you know, going to do or looking forward to in 2023? I'll start with you, Mark. What's one thing that you're, you're going to do this year? League Cup semi-final, Peter. Oh, Leading good. to Wembley. Yeah. That's Are you playing for them? I certainly yeah. will if, it, if I need to, Dan. If I need to, yeah. yeah. Will you go? You'll go. I mean, they're going to get to the final, aren't they? This is Newcastle United, of course. Well, so now in the semi final, uh, but they're going to get to the final. Yeah, aren't they? this is their year. This won't be a very popular podcast in the Southampton area on the South Coast, but yes, I think we've got it the best chance that we've had for a long, long time. Yeah. Good, okay, well, uh, there you go. Mark's going to go to the final if Newcastle get there. Yeah. Daniel, what are you, what's one thing you're going to do this year? I'm going to get a new tooth. That's what I'd like, Peter. Um, <laughs> from, from there. Mm. No, look, uh, <laughs> that is serious as well. Um, I'm sick of looking like this on podcasts. Um, yeah. I'm sick of talking like this too. Um, I... I it sounds very boring and people ask us this when we're, when we're speaking about the business, but I think it is, it's, it's more the same. Mm-hmm. You know, if, 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 if the ladies and gentlemen watching or listening to this haven't had a chance yet to watch the 2022 review video, I, yes. I'd, I'd really ask you to do so, yeah. um, please, everybody, because there's some great statistics in there um, in terms of how much clients trusted us last year in terms of investing their money, but the way in which they worked with us as well logging into the technology taking that ownership for themselves uh from from there the hundreds of hours which mark and the investment management team and graham and katie and everybody put together for, for our clients from from there so it starts to sound like a dull answer because it's not a new resolution it's 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 more of the same yeah. in 2023 it's standing up it's been proud about what we represent but it's been proud about the job which every morning we, we wake up and we say, let's do right mm-hmm. by our clients, let's mm-hmm. make them wealthier, let's help them do more with their money yeah. from there. Yeah, more of the same, but yeah. it's a good answer. More, is that the same for you, Will? Or are you gonna, have you got anything else up your sleeve you're going to do this year that you've not done before? I think I have to do more. I think that was the message from the, the board <laughs> meeting earlier on. Must do better, must do more. But okay. the great thing We've about We've got doing, that on camera now, so we can oh, come back in a year's sorry. time and see that. He's yes, actually remorseful, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's dangerous isn't it? <laughs> I think you know I don't want to sound corny but the great thing about my job is you know when people come in right so the, the best compliment I ever get from people who join is it's much better than you ever described mm-hmm. so that's feedback that I have to think about and mm-hmm. actually explain it better and actually how good it really is for, you know A for the client but B for the advisor but you know I met a, a chap yesterday who's you know he's come in he's settled all these clients in and he came up the whole way to Newcastle just to sit down and say thanks. Mm. You know, the clients, not one client, not one client has complained about the handover to the new advisors we got yeah, them to. Yeah. You know, he's he's looked after, his family's looked after. Um, and of course, he, he came up to say if there's, if, you know, he would like to come on the inside day to explain to advisors, because I'm obviously not that good at it, mm. um, about how it does change lives and make sure it con- continu- continues in a service for clients when advisors, you know, want to step out of the way mm-hmm. and looking after the advisor. Apart from that, you know, my son supports a, a club that George Best played for. Oh, right. So if, if they get to the final mark, you'll have to get me a ticket. Is that Fulham Hill? No, it's not. <laughs> George Best didn't. Did he pay for Fulham? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Fulham's not the semi-final. Eh? No, they're definitely not. No. Uh, anyway. David, what, uh, taking up yoga or anything like that this year? What's I was thinking about yoga. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's an action sport, isn't it? That kind of is there any fighting involved. Could be part of your high high achiever morning, so you could go That's in the it. sea first, yes, and then do yoga as the sun rises. That's what That's successful fine. people do. My my sister does that. She goes swims every morning, roka, you know, which you know, um, on her way to work, and dug a bank. That's part of it. <laughs> 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 I know I'll rig a dog a bank. I have <laughs> no, I've never, I I. Uh, I'd like, I'd like to be here in a year's time. That would be quite a good, 
good achievement. I think that would be good fun. I, that's, uh, I, I, I'd like to be able to do a lot more with the with the pledge, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. social mobility pledge. Um, and if I could convince some people in Westminster to do some things differently to help the country rather than help the party, mm. their parties, mm. then then fine. Mm. Uh, uh, um, I think I think that would be. I think that's possible as well because yep. they, they need to begin to think. I don't know who they listen to. Mm -hmm. that, that would be my, my take. I don't know who's giving them feedback, but yeah. they need to spend more time with listening to you. Well, Watching this podcast. To listen to some work and listen to podcasts. I mean, I, 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 you know me, I couldn't care less if, if they listen to me or not. I, I just think that they need to mm. listen to the public. Yeah. Mm. Um, real, real people. To real people yeah. and find out what, what is really happening yeah. in there because they're in charge. This that's just a big com company mm. that they're running. There, yeah. mm. it's you know we're running a small company, big company. But and you know you, you know every one of our clients is like a voter. Every one of them has a vote, mm -hmm. and so therefore you have to look after them. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they vote with their feet. Yeah, I can't vote with my feet because I'm British. I can. I, I, I am going to travel a lot more. In the future, um, but that's the, 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 there are not many better countries in the world than this one, mm -hmm. so we've got to try and get them not to be foolish mm -hmm. or you know, it's mm -hmm. and not to listen to rumor and then you if yeah. you to listen to facts, have a look at that and find out when somebody says, I'm not very well off, mm -hmm. when somebody says, I want a pay rise, the question would be in a free society, sorry, so how much do you actually earn a year? Mm -hmm. So how much you actually on now? You're struggling with that, okay, fine. But at least that puts a data. It, it 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 because most of the people who are on strike have got much higher average wages mm -hmm. than the people watching the telly. Yeah. So you know the sympathy would change mm -hmm. if they were actually talking about mm -hmm. like for like for mm -hmm. some of them, for some of them. And that, you know you won't change the health service until you get better doctors. And more of them. Everything else doesn't really matter, mm. you know, you, you, because only a doctor can fix you. Yeah. In, in, the, in the spirit of people, certain people releasing new books right now, I think David, you should definitely write a book. I've been trying to convince you to do this for a yeah. while, so I'm going to work on that. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do this year is try to get some of this get stuff done. Yeah. Yeah, a bestseller, uh, Daniel. Can I put right. jokes in it? Um, oh, no, that's your job, isn't it? That's my job, yeah. You don't need that. That's my job. <laughs> um, right, look, I, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there. I think it's been yeah. really interesting and. Uh, uh, I think it, it, my takeaway is, as, you, as you've heard from the gents, we're, we're going to go into 2023 with optimism, positivity, yeah. and ignore all the noise and be masters of our own destiny, which is what, the, as Daniel said at the start, what we've done for 16 years. So um, no change there. But um, thank you very much, Earl, thank Sir you. David, Mark, thank and Dan. Thank you, Peter. Um, and we hope one thing you'll do is, is give us a like. If you haven't already, I'm sure you have, but give us a like uh, on the podcast. Don't forget to hit subscribe to that red button as well and you'll get more of this like this. So for the previous 150, it's been great. And on to the next 150, do more with your money podcast as well. But for now, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone. If you're interested in taking your investing to the next level, or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, then download our free guides to ICES and pensions. These are available in the video description below.